Good morning, everyone. Um, I got to share my screen yet here. I thought I'd start a few seconds early just to make sure that everything is in place and working properly. We've got a few people flowing into the room now. This is outstanding. Good morning to everyone. Uh, we'll start in just about a minute officially, um, but feel free. Uh, I, I love to get to know people, talk to people in chat. Uh, I'll try to acknowledge any questions you guys have as we're going. I have lots to cover, um, but if you if you do have questions uh, or you just wanna say hi, uh, please feel free to do so in the chat. I would love to, to know who I'm talking to and what you guys think and, and all of that. So um, that is great to hear that everybody can see and hear me. Um, I have one more test, which is to make sure that all the audio that I have in my presentation comes through, but we'll find that out here pretty quickly. Um, so good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning to all of you that are, that are here in the great state of Ohio. That's where I happen to live. I'm just up the street here in Columbus, and uh, I wish that we were getting together in person. I know that uh, Bill and Kevin just talked about, um, you know, obviously the weird times that we live in and the, the evolution of this conference. Uh, and I'm super excited that I get to be a part of it today. So um, thank you guys all for being here. Uh, thank you guys all for joining me. And uh, I hope that we'll have a chance to get together in person sometime really, really soon. Okay, so let's let's get right into it. I've got lots of things to say, lots of things to talk about. Uh, and I would love to help you guys um, understand exactly how you can use Alexa with your brands. Uh, Caitlin has a question, which is, uh, how does the Alexa al algorithm differ from regular A9 and how to optimize product detail pages best for Alexa? Um, that's actually a, a really interesting question. I don't know that I'm going to be able to specifically answer that one today. Um, I, I don't, there isn't a way per se right now to um, optimize your uh, product pages or any of your um, details specifically for Alexa. Um, but what we're going to talk a lot about today is how you can actively, proactively do things uh, to make Alexa work for you with your customers and your brands. Um, but Caitlin, that being said, I'll give you my contact information is here on the screen. Uh, I'll talk about it more at the end, but please reach out to me. I'd be happy to try to help you find the answers to your questions. So uh, with that, let's, let's get right into it. I'm going to talk today, maybe if this clicker wants to work. Uh, my clicker does not want to work until I'm on the right screen. Okay. So um, I'm going to talk to you today a lot about that, that specific thing. It's a very interesting topic. Um, but this is where I always like to start a presentation like this by reminding all of you, because you're sitting in your homes, mute your device. I am going to say that word a thousand times. And I know a lot of you right now have one sitting maybe next to your desk or across the room. Uh, and I don't want to set it off every 30 seconds for you. That'll be frustrating. So if you have an opportunity, walk over, push that microphone button, mute your device. Uh, I just want to make sure that I'm not setting it off for you. That's, uh, that's no fun for anybody. I've had to mute all of the devices that are sitting here behind me. Uh, this is my voice lab. I do a lot of um, Alexa creation. And so I just want to make sure you guys are all prepared. I'm going to say the word quite often, including uh, its companions like Amazon and Echo. So um, mute your devices. All right. So like I said, we're going to talk about Alexa. Actually, um, that's the core thing that I want to talk to you about today is how do we use Amazon Alexa to talk to our customers, to talk as brands, to talk uh, specifically to the consumers that want to know more or, or to engage with us in a better way. Um, actually, uh, Alexa wanted to say good morning too. Good morning, Alexa. Awesome. So when you hear that name, uh, and was that audio able to come through? That was my test to make sure that you guys can actually hear the audio coming out of my machine. Were you able to hear Alexa talk just then? Can anybody confirm that for me? No? Uh, yeah, see, that's what I was worried about. All right, we're going to do this another way. Um, we're going to go back. Let's see if we can do this this way. Um, what if I do something like this? Good morning, Brandon. That's still pretty quiet. Man, very faintly. Um, Bill says that he can hear it, but uh, unfortunately, others can't. I want to make sure that we fix this here really quickly. So I'm going to do one more thing which is we're going to try and do, uh, you don't know that there's a microphone here. Just pretend that you don't see it. And let's see if we can do that. Maybe put some headphones right up here next to the microphone. And we'll try one more time just with some audio. Good morning, Brandon. How was that? Better? 
Okay, we will use that. Um, that is my best current option. Uh, I was worried about audio coming out of my slide deck, but it sounds like we're good. So she said, good morning, Brandemonium, which was very, very cool. Um, and the thing that I wanted to mention is that when you think about Alexa, you probably think about a device. You might think about like this one, right? This is an Echo that might be sitting on your kitchen counter uh, or on a, a nightstand or something like that. This is a device. Uh, certainly, if we think about other devices, like the ones with screens, we can do a lot of very interesting interactive things with screens. We can let people push buttons and watch videos and do all sorts of cool stuff like that. Uh, but again, a device that sits on a counter. And speaking of devices that sit on counters, if you haven't been uh, paying attention to the newest and latest devices lately, um, this is one that's actually coming out here very, very soon. Um, it's called the Echo Show 10. And the, the base is a nice big speaker, but the screen can rotate on it. And so as you think about... Um, walking through your kitchen and moving around, especially if you're trying to read a recipe, the screen actually rotates to, to follow you as you're, as you're moving through the room. Only when you want it to, obviously, but uh, you can let it do those kinds of things uh, so that the screen is always facing you no matter where you move. Uh, but these are all devices. And one of the things that I really like to set as an expectation in all of these kinds of presentations is that Alexa isn't a device. Alexa is actually cloud-based AI. Um, and that's an important thing to think about because it, it can be everywhere your customers are. It doesn't have to be just in a device that's in their home. It can interact with them through voice conversations like where we can do all the time. Uh, it can use visuals like we saw on those devices with screens. Uh, and it can even communicate with them traditionally through things like SMS and email. So because of those things, we really have this focus on the idea that we want it to be everywhere. It's in your customers' phones already. Uh, it's in their headphones and their earbuds. There are a lot of devices like the Bose Quiet Comfort 2 um, that allow you to have Alexa built right in. So you can just talk and you move around the room uh, and you're, you have Alexa available wherever you might be. There's also one more cool thing. You may have seen it here as I was showing my, my display is that I actually have a set of glasses. This is a pair of pretty normal looking glasses. I think I'm not a glasses wearer, uh, but you can see that they look like a regular pair of glasses. But they actually have Alexa built right in. And so you can see the arms are a little bit thicker than you might expect. And if I hold it up and say, Alexa, what time is it? It's 10, 21 a.m. So you can see that these devices work in lots of places, lots of different um, form factors. Um, but the idea is that Alexa can be with your customers wherever the customer wants to be. This is our vision for Alexa everywhere, right? As we think about people doing things at home, like listening to their favorite music or controlling the thermostat, these all make a ton of sense. But what about when you're in another city uh, or you're walking through an unfamiliar place and you need to know how to get to the store you're looking for? Uh, a good example I like to use is that um, I traveled quite a bit before we had this whole pandemic and I was walking through an airport and I had my headphones on and I said, Alexa, what gate do I need to go to? And she was able to pull that information up for me because she knew what gate my connecting flight was at based on a skill called TripIt. And so because of these kinds of things, um, I was able to just continue walking. I didn't have to stop and pull up my phone and get out of the way in the, in the traffic of the airport. I could just keep going. Um, and I had all of that information right there in my head. Another good example is, is at work, right? Being able to send messages to people, uh, being able to book a conference room just by walking into the conference room and saying, you know, Alexa, book this room for three o'clock. Um, you can do those kinds of things with these devices in the right places, but it's about the services. It's about the cloud and it's about AI. And that's really where a lot of this comes in together. So this is Brandemonium. I'm sure a lot of you are thinking right now, Jeff, we know what Alexa is. Thank you. We got it. Tell us how we can use it. How do we use this with our brands? Well, that's what I'm here to do today. Uh, I just wanted to make sure I was setting the stage, make sure you understand kind of what our perspective is on the entire landscape, how things work with devices, how they can be in all sorts of other devices. And I'm going to talk about how you can actually build your brands in three different ways right into um, Alexa. Three, right? I have to talk about three. So the first one is what we call works with Alexa. This is oftentimes where you find things like smart home devices. Now, it doesn't just have to be light switches and thermostats, though. There's lots and lots of kinds of things, of devices that you and your companies may make, uh, your brands may manufacture, um, like a crock pot, right? A crock pot's a perfect example of something that's not traditionally thought of as a smart home device, but it does give you the ability to control it directly with your voice. Um, you can do it from anywhere. So even if you're out at your kid's soccer practice and you want to start that four hour timer on that brisket or whatever it is you're making, um, you can just talk into your phone and to your headphones or whatever, uh, to your car uh, and make that kind of stuff happen. That's works with Alexa. Here's another quick example uh, as a video. So you can see that the person's coming home and they say to their car, Alexa, open the garage. 
boom. Of course, they have a device on their garage, but it opens their garage door. They can set their thermostat to 68 degrees because that's what they want it to be like when they get inside. Obviously, it doesn't happen that quickly, but they can also turn on the house lights. And then, of course, once they're in the garage, they can say, Alexa, close the garage door. Now, you could do a lot of this with some sensors, right? Once I recognize the car is in the garage, I could close the door, but we don't always want the garage to close right away, right? So being able to do this when we want, when we ask for it, makes a whole lot of sense. So that's a quick illustration of kind of the device side of the world. And we're going to talk about three different things. These first two are really focused on the people that make things that plug in. Um, and so I want to make sure that I'm really clear about that. We're going to spend a lot of time on the third one, which is for those of you that make things that don't plug in. Lots of consumer packaged goods and healthcare and all sorts of other stuff. So with that, let's talk about the second one, which is Alexa built in. If you're making devices, even if you don't make devices that are traditionally thought of as smart, you can use something like Alexa voice service to build Alexa right in. And so instead of you making a really nice toaster, now you're making a really nice toaster that's also have that also has Alexa built right into it. And so as you think about this, um, building a toaster or a clock radio like this one, um, this is made completely independent of Amazon. All they had to do was use, uh, and uh, Bill is asking right here, is there a way to uh, hack your own devices to work with Alexa? There, there absolutely is, and they're doing exactly that. Um, we have something called the Alexa voice service, and this voice service um, is entirely free. We give you all the software that you would need to run locally on your device. All you need to do is make sure that you have a speaker and a microphone available on your device to communicate with. Um, and you can build any device for free. Well, no cost from Amazon, I suppose. You still have to build the device. But in doing that, you actually have the ability to turn your really cool toaster into a really cool speaker um, voice assistant toaster inside your kitchen, right? That's a, that's a great example. Another one is like this lamp, right? This is a lamp made by GE. And it's not only a nice looking lamp, but it also has Alexa built in. And so you can talk to this device, uh, turn it on and off, but of course control anything else that you would have with Alexa as well, because it gives you the entire, the entire breadth of what Alexa can do directly in that device as well. The one that I really like to show and the one that I have the most excitement for is the idea around automobiles though. And I'm gonna let this video kind of illustrate that. Introducing the groundbreaking 2019 Lexus ES true product of mastery. Among its many new technologies, the new Amazon Alexa enabled ES gives drivers control over new car to home commands. Alexa, set the downstairs thermostat at 72. The thermostat has been set. Alexa, reorder sparkling water. Your sparkling water has been ordered. And new home-to-car functions open up a new world of convenience for ES drivers. Alexa, ask Lexus to remote start my ES. Your request for remote start has been sent. Lexus is proud to be among the first luxury automakers to feature Amazon Alexa integration. In the all-new ES, every curve, every innovation, Every feeling is a product of mastery. Experience amazing. Okay, so first I want to answer Bill's question. Are there other cars coming with this tech? Yes, and you can actually find a webpage on the Amazon website. If you just search for uh, Alexa Auto, um, you'll find a whole list of cars that are going to be incorporating Alexa in some capacity. Not This is the fullest I've seen, um, but there's a, a number of vehicles across a, a wide range of manufacturers and brands uh, across the United States. So yes, there's a ton of cars coming uh, that will have Alexa built in. And for those that don't, maybe you have a, a 2009 minivan uh, that certainly existed before Alexa did. Um, we make a device called the Alexa, um, sorry, the Echo Auto that you can plug right into um, your USB port or even to your aux jack in your car. Uh, and it gives you that same capability. So uh, very, very cool, very, very exciting. But the thing that I wanna talk about specifically in this commercial is that you actually got to see all three ways that you can interact with Alexa. The first one was the Alexa voice service. This is where you actually build something into a device. And when you saw the icon on their dashboard and when you saw the thermos, when she was asking about her thermostat, that was AVS, right? She was talking to a device that Amazon didn't make, right? This is an Alexa voice service product. Um, and it was able to communicate with the breadth of everything that Alexa can do. They built it right into their vehicle, pretty cool. But then when she asked her Echo in her kitchen to start her car, she was actually using one of the other interaction types. The third one we're gonna talk about in a moment, which is Alexa skills. Um, 
This is what we're going to discuss next. And the thing I want you to think about with Alexa skills is that it's a lot like the apps on your phone, right? It's all of the other capabilities that anyone can build uh, to take advantage of being available on Alexa devices all over the world. Um, this next step, though, the, when the car actually starts, that's an example of what I'm talking about here with um, smart home capabilities, right? It's that simple capability works with Alexa that allows you to start a device like that Crock-Pot. It's the exact same technology, same functionality. They just applied it to a car instead of to a Crock-Pot. So I think it's kind of cool that they can do all of those things in one simple commercial. Um, but the car does all of those things. And we're going to see more and more of this stuff as we head into the future. So with that being said, let's talk about the third one. This is where I want to spend most of my time today, um, and that's on the Alexa skills. So for those of you that don't make devices, this is the place you really want to spend your time. This is the easiest way to have an impact on your customers in a meaningful way. So there are over 100,000 skills today. You can see a bunch of them scrolling by right now. Um, they all serve different purposes. Some will let you order food. Some will let you summon a ride to your door. Some can check bank balances. Um, some can just provide entertainment, right, like Hulu but they all focus on extending their brand via voice. Now, I wanna do a quick case study. I wanna show you guys an example of a way um, that General Mills actually did something like this um, with an end-to-end -end voice strategy. So we're gonna talk about one of my favorite cereals. I'm actually on this crazy diet right now uh, that involves no sugar and no flour. So there are no cereals in my near future, uh, but it's working, so I'll stick with it. Uh, but we're gonna talk about one of my favorite cereals I could have before that diet, which is Lucky Charms. So. Lucky Charms is something um, that's, that's really, uh, they took an interesting approach to how you want to think about interacting with voice. The first thing they did when they looked at their situation, what they wanted to do was elevate their presence and they wanted to drive association between St. Patrick's Day and Lucky Charms. It makes sense, right? You've got this uh, Irish leprechaun. Um, he has this delicious cereal. We want to drive all of those associations together. And they did a build, big buildup last year in February before um, St. Patrick's Day. So the opportunity they had was to use cutting edge technology to unleash their imagination to give a one of a kind story building experience for their customers, which are primarily children at this point. Uh, but certainly their parents have a big role in buying the cereal for them and, and being engaged that way. So their solution was that they wrote an interactive story. Uh, imagine a choose your own adventure book of sorts, but very interactive. And the, the title of the story was the story of Lucky Charms. So let me give you a little taste of what that sounds and looks like. Oh, hello! Welcome to the story of Lucky Charms. I'm a magical storybook, and I live a hop, skip, and a jump over a rainbow in a magical forest on a magical bookshelf belonging to someone you might have heard of. His name is Lucky the Leprechaun. Now, have you heard of him or haven't you? So that's just how you start. Have you heard of Lucky or have you not? And of course, most people that are interacting with this probably have. Um, but this is an interactive storybook. So every choice you make leads you down a different path. Uh, and the, the people that build this, this is actually a production studio called Xandra. Um, they actually um, say that listeners, as long as they make different choices, they will never hear the same story more than once. Uh, there's lots of paths that you can loop through as you go down this journey. Uh, but ultimately, you get to have this fun, interactive story about finding and interacting with Lucky the Leprechaun. So that's how they started, right? They built a skill that does these things. It, it has a lot of interesting voiceovers and, and magical music and lots of fun and engagement. But they had to tell people about it. And this is one of the key things with skills is making sure that people know how this thing exists and how to interact with it. They did a high volume spend with paid and organic social media posts. They did things like Facebook and Instagram, Spotify audio ads using some of the audio we just heard. Um, with PR, they actually had a, a featured Wall Street Journal article. And then, of course, they had things on the General Mills social media and on their blog. So by doing these kinds of things, by pushing this content out and letting people know that it exists, they can have a really broad engagement and make people have a, a a larger affinity for their brand, for their cereal, um, which obviously hopefully increases sales and things like that. So this is just one example of how people can use skills to drive a really engaging story. But I have a second one. This one's also targeted at kids and it's from Kids Crest. So one of the things that they recognized, and I have a quick video that will explain this in better detail, uh, but they recognize that children rarely, well, not rarely, but far less frequently brush their teeth in the morning um, and certainly didn't always brush their teeth twice a day. 
And so they really wanted to solve the problem of how do we make this fun and engaging and drive that behavior? Right now, we're not focused so much on just the engaging with the brand, but we're really trying to drive behavior around our brand. So let me show you how this works. I'm going to keep the sharks out. How big is a whale? What do plants eat? Kids can be easily distracted. So for parents, getting them to brush their teeth can feel more like pulling teeth. Only 47% succeeding in the mornings and 69% at night. But ignoring brushing has consequences. Tooth decay has become the most common chronic disease among young children. So Crest Kids dreamt up a way for parents to make tooth time a journey of imagination with a simple voice command. Alexa, start Chompers. Chompers is a twice daily audio show that combines healthy brushing tips and curiosity inspiring content that keeps kids engaged while they build better brushing habits. Each episode runs for at least two minutes, the exact time dentists recommend for healthy brushing. Switch to the other side of the bottom of your mouth and keep brushing. So, which of these animals has the most teeth? A snail? A shark? Or a saber-toothed tiger? We'll tell you tonight when you come back for more Chompers. To make it easy for parents, Crest Kids integrated Chompers with Amazon's Alexa, empowering moms and dads to instantly unlock a world of original songs, jokes, stories, riddles, and facts, keeping kids entertained and on task so they brush better daily, morning and night. Tonight, we're going to give you the answer to that question we gave you this morning. Which animal has the most teeth? The answer is a snail has the most teeth. New content every morning and night drove a behavioral shift for Chompers listeners, boosting morning brushing to 73% and nighttime brushing to 89%. And a whopping 91% of parents credited Chompers with making brushing easier. It's unanimous. Chompers is a game changer. It's amazing what kids can accomplish in just two minutes, twice a day. Three, Three two, two, one, one spin! So I know the first time that I got an opportunity to see that video, I was actually surprised. I didn't know that snails had the most teeth out of those three animals. I would have certainly guessed shark, as you probably did as well. Um, but the, the idea there is that they built something really fun, right? And so the kids can easily just have a, a neck of dots sitting on their kitchen counter um, or, or in their bathroom counter, I'm sorry. And they can start the story and, and learn a little bit during the time that they're brushing their teeth. It gives them timers and encouragement. And all of that stuff is done to drive a behavior, right? We want them to brush their teeth every day. So those kinds of things are very, very cool. There's another cool story I want to tell about Coca-Cola. They partnered up with a company called Send Me a Sample. And Send Me a Sample is actually the one that built this skill. But you can see how it had a dramatic impact on how Coca-Cola hands out samples of new products uh, instead of things like street corners. So one more video. I promise this is the last one.
Anyway, I thought this was a really clever solution to the sampling problem, right? If you think about how many times we've had products that we've wanted people to try and we take them out on the street corner, we don't get any information about who they are. We don't really know anything except how many things we gave away. Um, and unless we have some really accurate data counting, uh, data tracking services of some kind, right? Somebody standing there monitoring exactly what's happening. Um, there's a lot of data loss there. And even then you're making assumptions about who that person is or where they're from or what their background is. So um, this gives you a whole lot more information. And it's, I think it's a really interesting approach to trying to get samples into our customers' hands. So that sent me a sample. I think that's pretty cool. But the relationship Alexa has with customers is powerful and it's made more so by the skills that you create. Um, and what I wanna do with the rest of our time, uh, I only have about six minutes, is to quickly take you through some examples of ways that you can make skills that are super powerful and super impressive. So the first one is to be unique. This thinks, this thinks about things like sound effects and speech cons, which is probably a word you've never heard before. But let me give you an example of what that sounds like. Here's some examples of speech cons and audio files. I can say vroom, like when a car revs its engines. Vroom. Or wahoo, when I'm excited. When something bad happens, I can say things like wah wah. And I can easily add sound effects whenever I need them. So there's some examples. You heard the speech cons. She can say the word vroom, but when you want her to be emphatic, when you want her to be excited about something, she can say vroom, right? Like you would make that sound to a little kid as you're talking about a car. So that's one example, but you can also use voice actors as you saw with Lucky Charms. You can also do things with something we call poly voices. If you don't have the ability to hire a voice actor, but you want it to sound different or more like your brand, you can actually use something called Amazon Poly, which is completely free inside your Alexa skills. And there's 62 different voices available. Here's a couple examples of some, some of my favorite English speaking uh, voices. Good morning, Brandemonium. 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 Anyway, there's a bunch of voices you can hear. We have women and men and different accents uh, and tones. It's, it's fantastic. So these are all the places we currently cover with voices, both in those languages and oftentimes in English with that accent. Very, very cool. So I'm running out of time. I'm going to move a little bit quickly here. Uh, the next one is be adaptable. We don't want to think about things like web and mobile or having buttons to click. This is very, very different. Users are going to ask for anything at any time, just like a conversation with people. And so you really need to be able to handle those kinds of situations when they do that. Um, I had a picture I was supposed to show while I said all those words. Okay, so the next one is be personal. Um, we really want to get to know our customers. We want to respond to them by name, right? You can ask your user what their name is. We have APIs that will allow you to ask to have permission to know what their name is, um, but know their status. Is this the first time they've been here? Is this the fifth time they've been here? Um, the more they use your skill, simplify things. Don't give them the full explanation every time when something simple will suffice because they've done all those things before. Those are just a couple examples of being familiar with your user and making it easier for them to navigate uh, whatever your voice experience happens to be. Be clear. This is another really important one. And uh, how do we get them to focus on the important words in all of our, our interactions, right? Um, we want to think about how we interact with our user and how we can keep everything as short and clear to the point as we possibly can. When they ask us a question, give them a finite set of choices. Don't make it ambiguous. That only makes it harder for you and it makes it harder for them to have a conversation. When you're reading lots of text to a user, Make sure you tell them you're about to read lots of text so that they're not stuck listening to a whole paragraph they don't really care about. And when you're presenting a list, tell them it's a list before you give them the list so that they know that they should be paying attention and get the information that they need. My next tip is being relatable. It's easy to lose sight of the fact that we're trying to build a conversation with our customers and we always focus on which buttons they'll click or sometimes we'll forget just to be natural with our speech. I want you to think about empathy for a minute. Uh, imagine trying to be this panda. Right? Instantly, as you see this panda, you feel bad. You're like, oh, he looks stuck. Maybe he's falling. I'm not sure. Right? You can feel it. Now, try to put yourself in the position of your customer trying to talk with your skill. How can you make it easier for them to understand what to do, how to respond, and how to make it more interactive for them? Right? Try to use your own natural language when you're writing your scripts. 
bounce it between multiple real people. You'll find it makes a huge, huge difference in how this all works. The last tip I'll give on this one is make sure that you use the one breath test. If you can't say it in one breath, it's probably too much and you're going to want to shorten it up. Okay, running out of time. Um, I have two more. Be trustworthy. I don't mean your customer's data. I mean, imagine being this child and they trust that their dad is going to do the thing that he said he was going to do, which is to catch them. When you think about interacting with something with voice and you say, yes, transfer $100 to my other bank account, you want to be positive that that's actually what's going to happen. So in those cases, I want you to make sure that you're actually um, do, responding to the user, letting them know what's going to happen, and then actually doing the thing that they expect. Trust is a huge, huge part of this experience, and we want to make sure that you're being good stewards uh, of your customer's trust. Okay, last one, be unpredictable. You've probably seen guides that look like this, right? This is from the iOS, uh, iOS style guide. This is from the Android style guide. They use words like predictable and consistent when we're creating our experiences. And it's really important to not do that when we think about uh, our, our voice skills. We wanna be unpredictable. You wanna make sure that the user doesn't know what's coming because that's how you pay attention. Think of every phone system you've ever been in and you're bored by the time they tell you what number four is. It's because you stop paying attention and it feels too robotic. Surprise them, delight them, do something that's different. These are the kinds of things you really wanna focus on. So as I wrap up here, we have an entire Alexa agency curriculum that covers all of these topics and more. And I wanna make sure you guys have access to this. So if you do nothing else, check out this link today. You can find this here at alexa.design slash agency. It'll walk you through our entire curriculum and allow you to help serve your brands, uh, both as agencies and as the companies themselves. Uh, think about better voice experiences as a whole. So with that, my name, uh, sorry, thank you so much for having me. I can't, I can't appreciate it enough. Uh, Bill and Kevin, thank you for having me at Brandemonium. Uh, my name is Jeff Blankenberg. You can find me everywhere online as at Jeff Blankenberg. And I, I do mean everywhere. So uh, go to the place you're comfortable. If you have questions, if you want to reach out, uh, I would love to chat. Uh, please find me in your favorite social media. Thank you all again and take care. And now I have to figure out how to sign off. Mm-hmm. <laughs>